Welcome physics students. In this video we'll be looking at a software program called Tracker ran by open source physics. So this is a freeware that can be downloaded and it allows you to analyze a video and effectively uses reference pixels and frame rates and allows you to analyze the motion of an object via video. So let's have a look at the free fall of an object due to gravity analyzing it using the software program Tracker. Let's now load up a video. Pretty much the menu bar starts from the left and works across the right. So we'll start with opening a new file. I've got a sample video I'll use. And that might take a second. Here we go. Now I want to rotate this first of all. So video filters. Let's rotate this. And we want to rotate it 90 degrees. Very good. Okay, moving across, we don't need to save anything. We'll go to the clip settings and we see here at the moment this is set at a frame rate of 30 frames per second, which is correct. We could adjust that if it was incorrect. We'll move across now. Now we're going to create a new calibration stick. Now using Tracker, we need to have a reference point of a meter somewhere in our image. So if I zoom in, you can see here I've placed a meter ruler. So I use my shift and click to reference the top, shift and click to reference the bottom of that meter ruler. And for some reason it says that's 401 meters, we'll change that to one meter. I now have a reference meter length and I can toggle that on and toggle that off. Before we go any further, I must remember I want to only analyze the section of the video where the ball is being accelerated by gravity. So at the moment it's in the student's hand. Eventually it will be released, at which point this ball now is only being accelerated by gravity. And I'd like to analyze where that ball eventually comes back to a similar position. Goes up and moves back down. Okay, so we'll go back to that start point where it first leaves his hand. Need to, of course, add in an XY reference. So I'm going to place that right on the middle of the ball. And again, I can toggle that on and toggle that off. Okay, so if I play this video, Show the ball going up, reaching the peak, and then the ball coming back down. Now I'd like to make certain that returns to a similar position. So I'm going to go back a frame to about here. Very good. All right, very good. So we can toggle that off. We create a track, and we're just going to create a point mass. Okay, and that's done. Now to track this, there's two options. You can either do a manual track or auto track. I'm going to do a manual track. So I press the shift key on my computer and I get this, this square, like a, like a target type device in the center and I click once with my mouse and it moves to the next frame. I click again with my mouse, it moves to the next frame. And I continue tracking this ball frame by frame. I might speed this up shortly. Okay, now at this point, you can see here we've got a graph that's all over the place. This is using the X coordinates. Now X is horizontally. We're actually analyzing the Y coordinates. So if I right click, actually left click, like at the moment, this has got an X position. I want a Y position graph. Ah, that looks more like it. So again, I'll keep tracking this frame by frame. And we can see we create what we expect. It's a typical shape position time graph. Tracking this ball frame by frame until it returns back to our last frame, which must be soon. There we go. Right, so we have here a graph. This is a position in the Y vertical axis against time. So we can see that it starts at a position of zero. So if I wanted to take that back and play it, we can watch each frame position on this graph as it moves through. And you can see here it climbs up to the top point and then drops back down from where we started. So that graph does in fact represent the Y position of this ball relative to time. Okay, I can also change that to velocity in the Y axis. And we can see we've got a pretty consistent velocity. It starts off here with a positive velocity that's above four meters per second, and then it slows down. And again, that makes sense because when we're at the start 
and it's leaving the student's hand, it's got its highest velocity. The moment it leaves his hand, it's going to be accelerating downwards or decelerating. So let's have a look. So the velocity is dropping, 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 dropping to a point where it gets to zero at the top. And then it continually maintains a constant gradient rise over run. Starts with a high velocity, reaches a point of zero right at the top, and then it ends up being around about minus five meters per second. So it starts at about five, ends up at about five. The first velocity moving upwards is a positive, and the final velocity moving downwards is a negative because it's a vector. So we've now got our position time graph, and we've changed that to a velocity time graph. We can also have a look at the acceleration time graph. Now that looks all over the place, but we've got a very, very small scale here. Let's take this back to the velocity. Now, because of the sensitivity of this measurement, it's easier to right click and go to analyze. What we'd like to do now is analyze this graph. And this is our velocity time graph. I'm gonna highlight using a left click of my mouse that particular section and I'm going to analyze fits curves. What we find is here, it's analyzed that pink line, a straight line, and we've got the equation, the velocity in the Y is equal to some gradient times time plus B. This is like a Y equals MX plus C. The gradient is this variable A. So at this point we can see that comes out to 1.032 E to the one. Now E to the one represents exponential so it's like 10 to the power of 1. So we have to take this number and multiply it by 10. So it's going to be minus 10.32 meters per second per second is the gradient of this velocity time. As we know, the gradient of velocity time graphs gives us our acceleration. So this graph has proven this ball for the whole duration once it leaves the hand to the top point, once it returns back to where the hand was, has an average acceleration of roughly 10 meters per second per second in a downwards direction which is not bad given it's meant to be 9.8 meters per second per second at sea level. A good result all up. If you've enjoyed this video on the use of tracker for motion tracking, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.